This news update is brought to you by... Say hello to Carol. Carol talks for a living from morning till night. So she relies on Flo's crystal clear home phone service brought to her through Flo's 100% fiber to the home network. It keeps her in the know. And because she bundles her mobile broadband and TV services, she enjoys huge savings so she can enjoy much more for much less. So visit any Flo retail outlet, call 1-800-804-2994 or visit discoverflow.co to find out more. One of a kind connection. This is how we flow. This is the Barbados Today evening news update for Friday, June 24th. Thank you for joining us. I am Marie Claire Williams. One man has been arrested and charged following a major drug operation over the past two days that also netted a total of 2,794 cannabis plants in four parishes. The operation took place in St. Philip, Christchurch, St. George, and St. Michael. It was led by drug squad officers who were supported by members of the Police Marine Unit and the Barbados Coast Guard. On Thursday, 1,786 plants, ranging from seedlings to six feet tall, were seized at Blades Hill, St. Philip, and another 105 plants at St. David's Christ Church. Lawmen also executed a search warrant at the residence of 33-year-old Daniel Medford of Cox Road Christ Church, where they discovered three grams of cannabis. Medford later pleaded guilty to possession of the illegal drug and was sentenced to six months probation. If breached, he will have to spend six months in jail. Earlier today, law enforcement officers also seized 463 plants at the Bell St. Michael and 444 plants at Hanson Hill St. George. One man has been detained following a high-speed chase in Britain's Hill this morning, which ended near the Rubis gas station in Wildy. Some eyewitnesses give this account of the incident. Um, I heard this sirens coming from off the main road, coming to the gap. Ha, 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 let them on Grand Theft Auto come around my car and went down into the further part of Britain. So then after coming from that side, I hear them coming again. My girlfriend called me and said, listen, this T... 400 a white car is being chased out here by we so when she said it should soon land back up by me i said but that passed me earlier i didn't realize they were chasing the vehicle because it wasn't at my window we are on my way to work here and i can on through when i sell about three or more jeeps and two more jeeps now run around when i sell so more action again when i sell the attorney for Rock Hard Cement has requested a stay of court action brought by the Town and Country Planning Department against the Mark Maloney-led enterprise. The move was aimed at blocking any further sanction against the company until its own appeal is heard in the High Court later this year. Attorney at law Vincent Watson made the formal application this afternoon when the matter came up for hearing before Magistrate Douglas Frederick in the District A Magistrate's Court. The company is accused of breaching a stop notice issued by the office of the chief town planner, Mark Cummins, instructing that no further development occur at lots 3 and 7 at the flour mill site, Spring Garden, St. Michael. It is also accused of carrying out, causing or giving permission for construction work and operations to be carried out on the properties while they were the occupiers. That was in contravention of Section 40B1 of the Town and Country Planning Act, Chapter 240. The question was also raised today as to whether an employee of the company, Justin Harrison, had the right to appear and speak on behalf of Rock Hard Cement. After the attorney made his submissions, Magistrate Frederick adjourned the matter until July 8. That's when the Crown Counsel, with the Office of Director of Public Prosecutions, Oliver Thomas, is expected to respond. Barbados recorded 104 new cases of HIV and AIDS in 2013. That's according to the Acting Chief Medical Officer, Dr. Anton Best. He revealed the numbers this morning as Bridgetown joined the rest of the Caribbean in observing Regional Testing Day. The figures show that more men are being infected. However, Dr. Best says overall annual numbers show a decline in cases. In 2013, 104 people were newly diagnosed with HIV in Barbados with about two-thirds of the new cases, 71, being men. The annual number of new HIV cases in Barbados is on the decline, and this is in keeping with other studies which indicate that HIV incidence or rate of new HIV cases is slowly decreasing. And we attribute this to the use of antiretroviral therapy, emphasizing the pivotal value of case identification and linkage to care with the provision of antiretroviral therapy. 
In 2013, 55% of persons newly diagnosed with HIV were at advanced stages of the disease at the time of their diagnosis. This indicates that we continue to diagnose people very late in the disease process, and this is problematic for two reasons. One, late HIV diagnosis means that their chances of favorable outcomes are reduced. And secondly, there is an ongoing risk of HIV transmission when someone is unaware of their HIV infection. Opposition candidate for Christchurch West, Dr. William Duggett, says government may be preparing to introduce a health insurance scheme that would see Barbadians paying directly from their wages for health care services. His statement comes on the heels of an announcement by Health Minister John Boyce this week that he was now ready to propose to Cabinet the way forward for health care financing in Barbados. Dr. Duggett was addressing a meeting of the Barbados Labour Party last night. The intention to bring a change in law where health funding will no longer come from your taxes but instead will come directly from your pay packet. Like how the national insurance takes a levy out of your pay packet now, is part put by the employee and part put by the employer. And from my just in those consultations, I got the impression that that is the way that the government is looking to go to fund the health care. The head of the European delegation to Barbados and the Eastern Caribbean, Ambassador Mikhail Barford, is assuring Barbadians that there is no reason for panic over the impact on the country of the UK's leaving the EU, at least not yet. Barford told Barbados today it was now a matter of wait and see what would happen next. He explained that there will be no immediate consequences of the referendum while negotiations are ongoing. There's regional and international news after this short break. I love it. I love it. I, I gave in your sweetness. Hey, it's your girl Azizi, the Barbados City Crop Over Superstar 2015. The competition is even more exciting this year. There'll be three champions. The public will choose their junior, Soka Royale, and Pickety Crop champions. So here's how it works. Go to our Facebook page at www facebook.com slash Barbados Today to fill out your competition form. Two, upload your video with your song to Barbados Today's Facebook page. Three, make sure you invite all your friends and family to vote for you. The contestant with the most votes by the end of their competition will be crowned champion. I gave me a sweetness. I know you like sweetness. All of this is sweetness. In news from the region, security chiefs of regional central banks are meeting in the Bahamas this week to discuss ways to enhance their security networks. We get more from ZNS Network News. Greater efficiency through an integrated regional central bank security network to guard against new and emerging security threats like cyber crimes is the basis of the fourth annual conference of regional central banks security chiefs. Deputy Governor of the Central Bank of the Bahamas, Michael Lightburn, says the meeting is timely as the problem is real and growing. He cited the recent hacking attack on the Bangladesh Central Bank as a prime example. The authorities examining the theft of $81 million from the Bangladesh Central Bank uncovered evidence of hacking and three hacking groups, including two nations inside the bank's network, but determined that a third unidentified group Pulled off the heist. With technologically highly skilled criminals using the most sophisticated tools, Mr. Lightburn says bank employees must be even more astute. 
Lightburn tells his audience, comprised mostly of regional central bank's security chiefs from Trinidad and Tobago, Jamaica, Haiti, Belize, Barbados, Curacao, and St. Martin, that they must exercise due diligence in strengthening their security systems. And finally, at least 14 people, including an 8-year-old boy and a toddler, have died in flooding in West Virginia. Governor Earl Ray Tomlin says heavy storms and flooding have caused widespread damage throughout the state. A state of emergency was declared in 44 of the state's 55 counties. Rescue efforts are underway for about 500 people trapped in a shopping center. And officials continue to search for others stranded in devastated areas. The flooding has destroyed more than 100 homes and knocked out power for thousands after a storm system dumped nine inches of rain in parts of the state. That's the news this evening. Remember, you can get more on our website, www.barbadostoday.bb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, and like us on Facebook. We're on Izumi Media in bus terminals and screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. You can also tune into Channel 99 on Flow TV or Mix 96.9 FM for more news. I am Marika Williams. Good evening.